Hey everybody, this week's podcast on growth statistics. What does that mean and how do you keep track of all this? Uh, statistics are the metrics of business. Uh, I think we don't do a very good job in our industry as solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and CEOs of chiropractic office is we don't treat it like a corporation when we really, really, really should when it comes to metrics and statistics. How do you know where you're going if you don't know where you came from is an old tale, right, that we tell ourselves and hear all the time. But it's so important to know the statistics in your office. So let's let's go through that. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. Um, your OVA, PVA, I assume a lot of chiropractors know this, but it's amazing how many don't. They may have heard of PVA, but the rest of them, they really haven't, which is odd because I think if you've gone to any conference anytime outside of chiropractic school, you should have heard something about this, but it's okay. Let's go through this stuff and what it means and, and how you calculate it. The more data you have, the better your number, your better your averages, your sample size, right? Don't be a pharmaceutical company and pick 300 people and then take statistics from that and say the drug works. I mean, we want a bigger sample size than 300 people to really figure out what's going on. So same thing with you. Don't take three weeks of data and then say, you know, this is my PBA. Take as much as you can. If you're brand new into the practice, take what you got. But if, for many of you that been a, a whole year is great. And a lot of your EHR programs do this for you. You can just run into like, total visits for, you know, a, a rolling calendar year, pick this date last year and roll it to yesterday and look at those 365 days and get that total number of visits. You can then decipher whether they're new patients or not and, and take them out. <clears throat> then, then you look at the new patients and then you're like, okay, well, 250 of those total visits are new patients. So I'll subtract that from the total vis visit scene. And that will give me a, a pretty much an idea of non day one visits. So that's, I mean, adjustments or treatments or something or report of findings or something that I'm doing in my practice. And then I'll give you a number. When you take that number of total visits for the year and divide it by your collections, that is your office visit average. That, that is what you're getting per, per transaction in your office. These are important because that determines how your marketing is going to go. Some of you have got $36 OVAs. I've, I've seen lower folks. Uh, it's 2023. And, and when I, I'm like, man, uh, that's a really low office visit average. And, and then you wonder where getting budget and what they should do because how much are they going to put in to try and get a visit in the office? Do you see, see what I'm saying? Um, so that, that will deter, we'll get to that in a second. So we have office visit average. Then you can take the total collections and divide it by the new patients. Then you got your case value average, your CVA. Your CVA is important. This is what you make every time somebody walks through your front door. I think that is the gold nugget when it comes to numbers in your office for marketing. Make sense? Because now you know what a patient is worth. Um, so whatever it may be, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, whatever that number is, you now know, okay, well, what am I willing to invest to acquire a new patient to the office if they're worth $2,000? Pretty, pretty good, right? If we keep with the 10% rule, we'll stay under that $200 mark. And when you see, you know, your Facebook ad saying it's 95 bucks to, to get a lead to convert to a new patient visit, you might be okay with that depending on how things have been going with your ads and, and where you're at. We, it, it's much deeper analysis when we're doing the marketing, but these are numbers you need to know. So we got, we got that. So OVA, CVA, now your patient visit average is how many times in their lifetime they will come to see you in your office. And that one is, the, again, this is why you want more data. So over the course of the year, you take your total visits and divide it by the new patients. And divided by the total number of new patients. I, I think I gave an example of 250, right? So take whatever that is, um, a thousand visits for the year, you know, you did it for, uh, for the whole year. No, come on, it's too low. It's 100 a month. Uh, 10,000 visits. There you go. 10,000 visits divided by 250. Okay, 40 PVA. Um, and then you get a number that's 40. So you, you see patients 40 times in your office, healthy PVA. Uh, that those numbers play a big role as well. So when you have an acquisition of two, so, and then you go for $2,000 divided by 40, right? 
You get you getting where I get this numbers? So we got the $2,000 case value average. You guys can be writing this down and I'll, I'll do a quick at the very end, you know, what, what you should write down. Case value average divided by the total number of new patients gives you that 40, right? You take the $2,000 divided by 40 visits, you have a 50 office visit average. Many, you know, math, right? You can flip the equation. I was doing things both ways for you. Um, yeah, I was two cor- I was two courses short of a math major in university. So, anyways, there you go. So this stuff all makes sense. Linear, you know, linear math makes sense in my head. I love numbers just happen very quickly. So when people are going through numbers, I'm like, just go, just keep go faster because yeah, I got it downloads so quick when I'm at seminars. But then when it comes to literature, I'm like, slow down. I don't speak English so well. Um, that's my brain. So there you go. Those are those are the big numbers that you need to know in your practice. Then there's microdata in your office that drives the systems and procedures. Are you okay with that? Can we move on? OVA, PVA, CVA, office visit average, patient visit average, case value average. Need to know those. We do always do a rolling calendar. Don't pick 2021. You know, everyone wants to go to the best year. They're like, I'm going to go 2019. Yeah, I got a 70 PVA. Why do you have a 70 PVA? Because you had no new patients. But anyways, um, <laughs> uh, you can manipulate data too, right? Like when you're doing uh, division, if you lower that bottom number, you're just going to skyrocket. The number's going to go up. If you increase that bottom number, it's going to it's going to go down. But anyways, uh, so you guys got that. Now, micro data in the office is like the patient experience, um, your your completion of the system of care that they have. Do you have a roadmap for your patients? Do you, do you have a roadmap for everything? It's it's easy. It's easy. The easy road is when you create a road a one roadmap that everyone follows. Those very those cookie cutter type offices. Um, we all kind of have that and do it, but each patient is unique. You know, each you you custom care that. So it's okay to do it. That what I'm saying is okay to have that system. If you have one, if you have one and it's been working for you, please call me. I've been doing this for a long time. It's never just one system that works, whether, whether you have a family of five that comes in, I mean, now that changes the entire system, whether you have solo people coming in, whether you have acute chronic, you know, care planning, uh, we we do it all in our office just because we're so tailored to each individual that comes to our office. That's the experience we give them. Uh, it just works for us. We we enjoy it. The the team enjoys it. Uh, it feels natural. It, it's for us. The cookie cutter systems work too. You know, not to knock on the joint. You're going to get the same thing every time you go in. They give a little bit of freedom to the practitioners to do something. Like if they have active release, they can they can do some of that. But really. You know, there's no, there's no protocol. There's no care planning with that. It's a membership type thing. So not to knock that, but that's a one cookie cutter shot. You go in there, you're getting chocolate chip cookies. But, you know, that's it. So that's that. The microdata in your office is so important uh, for the experience. And, knowing, and how do you create systems around that? So having a flow chart, an Excel sheet, whatever you have tracking the patient. I, I remember when we used to do this on like a, a sheet that we printed it would just keep getting longer and longer, like wider. It, it was kind of chaotic, but you would follow the patient right when they come in. So we have a new patient tracker and then we have on the Excel sheet right across a whole bunch. Of, I should share this. We should have it all across like day one. Day, sorry, sorry, lead where they come from day one, uh, day two. It's just a check mark. Yes, yes, yes. Care plan. Yes. Um, gift of health. Yes. Gift. Yes. If they did, or or leave the blank. If they didn't, uh, referred. Do they refer? Yeah. Did they get to their re-exam day twelve, day ten, eleven, twelve? Did they get there? Did they get to the twenty four? Did they get to the thirty six? That is our our thing there. Uh, I think there's a couple more columns like are they in the email list? Are they getting the drips? You know, like we have this all the way across, and it has to be checked on. Pretty much, it's e- the easiest thing for your CAs to do is to just update this daily. Because to update it, you know, one, two, three, four, five new patients at a time is way easier than the end of the week, like us, where we could have 20, you know, and then all of a sudden they're trying to go back and, and go through 20 new patients and be like, okay, well, did they come in for the day two? You know, did they start Monday? So that that's the best way. Just create, it's an Excel sheet. Create it the way you like it. I, these templates, again, these cookie cutters, 
you know, we develop it, we we send it to you as coaches or as programs, and we're like, are you doing the stat sheet? And you're like, oh no, it doesn't really fit my office. And you don't use the tools because they don't really they're not custom to your office, and you don't do that stuff. So just create your own Excel sheet. That was it. New patient tracker. I think we have an annual one, like it's called 2022 new patients and then 2023 new patients tracker. You, we, I think we need to go back. We need to go to quarterly now because these things get so long. So um, that that's it. I'll, I'll review that one more time. New patient name, lead, like where did they come from? You need, were they referred? Were they a walk by? Did they see us on Google, Google ads? Where do they come from? We have our, we have our ways of checking that because we know where the lead came from. Day one, yes, just a check mark because the data is in their EHR. You don't need to put dates. You can. You can be as detailed as you like. Day one, day two. You say, well, why would you have a day one, day two? Do people not show up for day day two? Not us. We have a hundred percent day two success rate. Um, but some clinics have a ninety-five. You got to understand where. Why would five percent of people not come in? And when you go back and realize, oh, it was a one-time snowbird that came in. Oh, okay, perfect. We have some snow. We have some snowbirds. We have some travelers in our area. This this defines your demographic. You need to know this stuff. Day two, do you do any mailers to them? Do you send them something in the mail? We send a welcome letter with a Starbucks gift card because at the end of the letter it says, "Oh, it's in here. It's in it's in the Facebook one on one marketing. It's under you know uh, files. Go to files. Download the Starbucks letter. It's fantastic. David Jackson, thank him someday. Uh, good stuff. Use that. Send them a gift card." Then uh, do you send anything out? We do like baby boxes. Um, Sarah and Crystal in our office, they, they will send out a baby box to mamas that are expecting or just had their baby. They'll either wait till baby's born or send them a box. So that's what the gift thing is for. Do we send them a gift? Did they pick up, did they pick up a gift in the office? Um, and you, this is the experience, right? At the beginning, it's all, it's all rah, rah, rah. Welcome to FLC. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the mistake you make is that you drop off with the rah, rah, rah. You don't want to drop off. The cheerleaders are there every Sunday cheering on the team. You should be too. Like keep up with that. It's not just at the Super Bowl, right? Super Bowl. Okay. Um, so what was I with that? Day one, day two, gift of health, uh, re-exams. Your re-exams, their scans. Did, did you talk? And then you can just make this any way you want. That's, what, that's my flow in my office. Maybe you guys don't do that, but that's our flow. We don't keep track of them. Did they get x-rays? Did they not get x-rays? Again, that's patient care. That's different. This is like marketing flow. How are they going there? Did they refer? Did we thank them for a referral? What did we thank them with? These are ways to go there. Giftology, what a great book. Read that book. It changes your way of thinking about giving and gifting people prior to receiving. So you gift prior to receive so that you receive more in the future. It's a great logic. It makes a lot of great sense. So Giftology, great book. Uh, there you go. That that's the statistic. You need to have this stuff. This isn't optional. This isn't optional. Um, you know, I I joke. Uh, you got two options. You do it or you don't. You do it, you level up. You don't do it, you stay in mediocrity and do what you're doing. I mean, that which might be fine. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you make seven million a year. I, maybe that's great for you. Uh, but anyways we're all trying to level up. I know we're all trying to move up and, and do things. Not only are we trying to level up these younger doctors and the younger generation, not that I'm that old, but they are coming in with a different mind frame. Frustrating as an employer, but respectful as a human. They, they value their time and their mental health, if they have consciousness on that. Which is which is frustrating as an employer because you're not you're not going to get sixty hours a week out of them. Which I'm not pushing them to, but I respect it because they're like, yeah, you know what? I don't like that. I'll do something else because they know <laughs> you can't come to my office and be like, I don't like that. I'm not doing it. I'm like sayonara. They, they they know what to do. They know how to talk to me. They're like, I, how about we do? How about I do this? I'm like, yeah, TikTok video. Okay. That, that substitutes the marketing for that makes sense. That's just an example, but they, they value their, you know, they're like, I'm not going to push myself or stress myself to do it as much as I admire that in order to be a CEO of your business, you're going to have to do things you don't like um, statistics, sitting in front of an Excel sheet, QuickBooks. You're going to need to do this stuff because no one else is going to do it for you. Uh, and you know, you know why no one else will do it for you? Because no one else gives a crap about your business. Your accountant doesn't give a crap about your business. Your mom doesn't care about your 
I'm kidding. My mom cares about burgers. Um, you know what I'm saying? No one can stop complaining. Nobody cares. Who was that? Les Brown. Uh, stop complaining. Nobody cares. No one's listening. No, you know, no one's listening. If you hire me and you pay me, I'll listen. I'm a coach. We'll do it. <laughs> they, they all the coaches that will help you will do it. Um, we're just straight to the point. I want to get you to your goals, the straight line, as straight as possible. This is the basics. The videos that I'm, that I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing these videos for myself. You know why? Because when I get a coaching client, I can send them to the group, or they're probably in the group, and I'm like, go watch that video here, and I'll I'll send them the link. I'm going to upload all these to a YouTube channel, so I have that YouTube link, and I'm just going to send it to them. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You should be doing this stuff in your office with videos. How to use the foam roller, how to use the neck towel, how to use the dental roll, how to use the cervical traction, how to do lumbar stretches, how to do yoga's pose, how to cook a healthy meal, how to juice, how to – you po you post these videos when you get a chance. And over time, you build this YouTube channel with hundreds of videos. You build this email campaigns with dozens and dozens of different emails. And then you sit back one day – and it's click and go, click and go. And then you got your time back. You're trading time for money. Or you pay people tens of thousands of dollars to do this. There's nothing wrong with that. But just remember, you're not going to get your identity out there when you pay a third party to do it because they're just going to do marketing stuff, right? You want your touch on your business. You want your touch. You, you can call your business anything you want. You want your touch and you want your exit strategy. People don't even know what to look for when they buy a business. They're looking at your bottom line. You're looking at your bottom line your entire career, and you're missing the big picture. If you have an email list of 13,000 active emails, and you're looking to retire or sell your business, that in itself, you're going to leverage that in the sale. They'll be like, ah, I don't know. I don't want to pay you 1.1 million for this business. You know, the banks are saying it's, you know, the analysis after costs and loss and goodwill, it's about, you know, 600, 650. You're like, no, it's 1.1. Uh, here's my list. This is three times the industry average. You tap into this with any lateral, you're going to get 130 new patients from it. Like you're at 130 buys. Every time I hit the send button, I get 130 buys or anything new that I do, a promo, massages. That's how active my list is. And they're like, oh. And then you can put a number to it. You're like, hey, if you get, if you bring in a decompression table and you charge 150 bucks and you hit this send button, you're going to get 130 buys on the first couple emails, like in the same month. Like if you want to do it, and you can prove it to them because you can show your campaigns that you do. I do it in my office. I can show when I hit something, I know I'm getting 13 new patients. I'm not at 13,000, but email. But you see what I'm saying? You got to build this stuff. And then you have access to it. And then it's plug and go. My RCAs now know for like our uh, weight loss program, the videos that I shot on our YouTube channel, they just grab the URL and text it to them. I'm like, hey, Sandy needs a protein day. Send her the protein video. Or hey, Michael needs the, the video on the towel, how to do a rolled up towel. He just started last week. He's got to do that for his neck tension. And then we'll give him a dental roll in a couple of weeks. Just send him the, the, the towel video. They know. They clip, paste, go, boom, through SCED or through our Google Voice, whatever it is, boom. Autoplay, it becomes systems, and then the procedures become very easy in your business. Okay, so know your statistics, keep good tracks on your statistics. Lots of stuff out there. Click up um, Monday.com, your Excel sheets. Um, Microsoft has a bunch of cool uh, business statistics stuff, but again, they're templated, and when you when you download them, they're not perfect for a chiropractic office because you do a bunch of other stuff. I say create an Excel sheet. How about I share? mine i'm gonna to have to delete all the i'll copy it the excel sheet i'll put it into the the group and then i'll just delete all the patient names right just stay out of trouble but then i'll leave all the other columns so you can see how we fill them um that's but that's how we do it take the excel sheet do it yourself keep your stats keep growing keep moving let's talk about laterals soon and how you can get to the next level doing laterals in your office but have a great week stay safe stay well take care